Greetings, it is Max Diddley here, and today I'm here for another JRPG tutorial of you get that A in your coursework. And today we're here with part 3 to our spell checker series. It's been two years, but I haven't forgotten about this series, and we're actually going to go and complete it in the coming months. So let's get right into it. Today we're going to be simply just storing all of our words in a text file. Because right now we have an array and we're defining it per like using one line of code for each word that's not effective what we're actually going to do is have a little text file called words and it's going to have each word in our dictionary separated with a comma or new line so let's get into how we actually implement implement it so firstly we can delete all of this and we're going to make a function called public static string array read dictionary and we're going to pass in one parameter and it's going to be a string for the file path. The first line of code we're going to include is array list string records equals new array list string. We're going to create an array list. This is better than creating an array mainly because there's more functionality but also we can change the size of this array list dynamically as opposed to an array and we don't want to like read the file count how many records there are or how many words there are then create the array with the right size, then reread re through it again. This is just much easier. After that, we're going to have a try catch. So try here, catch here, with an exception E, and inside we do system.out.println E to print out any errors. And inside the try, we do scanner, scan. So we're going to make an object to read the file. Then we do scan equals new scanner, new file, file path. So with our scanner object, we're going to create a new scanner for the scanner. And this scanner is going to scan the file path, which we passed in here. So it's basically telling a person, hey, can you read this book for me? So here you're creating someone who can read. And here you're telling the person who can read what book they should read. And then we do scan.useDelimiter, square brackets, comma, slash, n, square bracket. And that's basically using a comma or a new line to separate each field. So let's say we just have a whole text file full of words. How do we know when one word stops and when one word starts? So we can use commas to separate them or a new line if we want to. So if you're unfamiliar with this stuff, refer to my how to read a record using Java tutorial if you want to know more. Then we do while well, scan dot has next. What does this do? Continue looping through the file while well, there's more stuff to read. Once there's nothing left to read, the while loop will terminate. Then we do records, referring to our string array list, dot add, which just adds a new element with data to the array list, scan dot next. What does this do? Add the next thing we read to the array list. That's all it does. And when, when we say next thing we read, Scan.next will read everything up until a delimiter. So let's refer back to our words file. So the first scan.next that we call will read greetings. Because that's everything until up to the next delimiter, which is the comma. The next scan.next after that will just read it. Because that's everything until the next delimiter. The one after that would read is. And so on. It reads up until the next delimiter which is a comma. Underneath the try catch, we need to do string record array equals new string records dot size. We're going to create an array, which is the size of our array list. And after that, we're going to do records array, which is our little array here, equals records, which is our array list dot to array, record array. What are we doing? We're basically going to convert we are assigning records array, which is this string, to have all the array elements of this array list records. We're not converting records to an array because records still exists as an array list, but records array, which is our array and not our array list, will have all the values of what records has at the time of the conversion. So then we can return it to our, so then we can return the array as a string array, which is what type of function this function is, or method, I should say, as it's Java. After that, we do return records array. 
Why? Well, we need to return it so we can interact with it elsewhere in the code. Now, we need one line of code in our main method. String array word list equals read dictionary words.txt. So we're creating a word list array, which is the array we had before, and we were manually entering in each word of the dictionary. But instead, we're creating the same array still, but we're going to we do equals read dictionary, and we pass in words.txt. Obviously, you can change the name, but make sure you update the code in other areas, because it's dependent on this array name. So, let's click play. It says no errors. That's pretty good. Which implies this is correct. But let's do, let's misspell greetings. Let's get rid of the G. As you can see, it says greetings is spelt incorrectly. How about we... Let, let's misspell and and make it ND. As you can see, it says ND is spelt incorrectly. Obviously, you want to expand your dictionary to include more words than just the words in this sentence. So basically, it's working like it does, like it did before. But this time, we have all the data in a text file. Easy to read, easy to edit. Anyway, guys, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment. I will be uploading more to this series. We are going to have a complete grammar and spell checker in a few months. Uh, so be sure to subscribe for that. Thanks for being a great audience and I'll see you next time.